And Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Satan told Jesus that he could make bread out of stones, but Jesus told Satan that God's word was more valuable to him. Matthew 4.4 4. Satan took Jesus up on the temple and told him he could throw himself off the temple and God would protect him. But Jesus told him he would not tempt God. Satan took Jesus up to an exceeding high mountain, showed Jesus all the nations, and told Jesus that he would give them to him if he would worship Satan. But Jesus said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Matthew 4.10 Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when Jesus had heard that John the Baptist was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Matthew 4.12 Jesus called twelve men to follow him. Jesus taught in Galilee, which is the area north of Jerusalem in Israel. Jesus healed the sick. Isaiah 35.5 prophesied that the Messiah would open the eyes of the blind, and Jesus healed the blind man. John 9. Jesus raised the dead. Meanwhile, John the Baptist had been killed by King Herod, but not until his disciples told him that Jesus was performing mighty miracles, which proved that he was the Messiah, the Christ. When Jesus and his disciples were in a storm and were being tossed by the wind and waves, Jesus rebuked the storm and it stopped storming, Luke 8:24. In another display of his miraculous power, Jesus walked across the sea to the disciples who were in the ship, Matthew 14, 25. The Jewish leaders in Jesus' church were suspicious of Jesus and tried to make him look bad. But Jesus had wisdom that came from God and he shut them down. One day, Jesus took three of his disciples up to a high mountain, and he was transfigured as he talked with Moses and Elijah, Matthew 17. After the transfiguration, Jesus spent a little more time teaching in Galilee, and then he headed to the coast of Judea, Judah, beyond the Jordan River, where the Jewish temple, the Jewish leaders, and Calvary, Mount Moriah, where God had sent Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, were located. Matthew 19, 1. Jesus' presence in Jerusalem was a problem for the Jewish leaders because he kept talking about God's ways versus the ways of of the Jewish religion. While Jesus was in Jerusalem, he cast the businessmen out of the temple. One of the Jewish leaders came to talk with Jesus one night, and Jesus told him, Nicodemus, a man must be born again to see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. Nicodemus and the Jews thought that they would see the kingdom of God because they were genetically connected to Abraham. But Jesus explained that children in God's king kingdom are children of belief and spiritual birth. Jesus told Nicodemus that we would have to believe 
trust that God would save us from our sins just like the people trusted, believed. God would save them from the poison of the venomous snakes when Moses led them out of Egypt in order to be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus that God loves the world, that he was inviting anyone who believes in Jesus to be in his, God's, kingdom, which is a spiritual kingdom. Then Jesus went to Sychar in Samaria, which is the area that the ten tribes inhabited after the kingdom of Israel was split during the time of King Rehoboam, and spoke with the woman at the well. The woman wanted to talk about the difference in their religions, but Jesus taught the woman at the well that he is the Savior at the well. Jesus told the Samaritan woman, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. In the last few days before he was crucified, Jesus rode the colt into Jerusalem on the day that we celebrate as Palm Sunday. Matthew 21, 7. The Jewish leaders met to plan Jesus' death. Jesus told his disciples that the feast of the Passover was going to be held after two days and he was going to be betrayed and crucified. Matthew 26, 2. When Jesus gathered with his disciples to celebrate Passover, he compared the Passover bread with his body. When Jesus gathered with his disciples to eat the Passover meal, he showed them that he was the lamb, which cleanses us from our sins. After Jesus and his disciples observed Passover, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, which is on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem. Jesus prayed, if it be your will, let this cup pass, but nevertheless, let your will be done. Jesus, Judas, told the Jewish leaders where they could find him, and they came to get Jesus that night. The Jewish leaders could not lawfully kill Jesus. They wanted him crucified, so they took him to Pilate, who was the leader of the Roman government in Jerusalem. Pilate wanted to release Jesus, but Pilate gave in to the mob and turned Jesus over to the men who would crucify Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he brought believers in the Gentile world into God's kingdom. When Jesus was dead, Joseph of Arimathea went to Pilate and obtained permission to bury Jesus. Nicodemus, who talked with Jesus about being born again, went with Joseph of Arimathea to get Jesus' body off the cross, prepare it for burial, and put it in Joseph's tomb. Some of the Jewish reli religious leaders were convinced that Jesus was trying to pull a hoax, and they went to Pilate and asked him to post a guard to keep people from stealing Jesus' body and claiming that he had risen from the dead. Pilate told the Jewish leaders to post a guard, and they sealed the tomb with Pilate's seal and placed Roman soldiers there to make sure that no one would steal Jesus' body and perpetuate the hoax that he had risen from the dead. 
but neither the government nor the religious establishment could thwart Jesus from accomplishing his intended purpose. When some of the women followers of Jesus went to Jesus' tomb, they found the stone rolled away, an empty grave, and an angel who explained that Jesus had risen from the dead and was gone. The angel showed them the place where the Lord lay. They hurried away to tell the disciples, and Jesus met them on the way, and they saw he was alive. Jesus showed himself to his disciples too. Jesus appeared to two men who were on the way to Emmaus, Luke 24, 15. Jesus showed them what Moses, the prophets, and all the Old Testament scriptures said about him, Luke 24, 27. The men did not realize they were talking to Jesus until they invited him to dine with them, and he blessed the bread and broke it. Luke 24, 31. Then Jesus vanished, and they hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the eleven disciples and those that were with them that the Lord has risen. Luke 24, 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Jesus' disciple Thomas was not with the disciples when Jesus appeared to them, and he said he did not believe and would not believe until he could touch Jesus' wounds in Jesus' side and hands. John twenty twenty five, And after eight days... Again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. All Thomas could say was, My Lord and my God. John twenty twenty nine, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. When Jesus left earth and went back to heaven, he told his disciples to go into the world, teach, and make disciples of all nations. Jesus told them not to depart from Jerusalem until they had received the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost, and they obeyed, Acts chapter 1 and 2. They poured out of the upper room into the streets of Jerusalem and began to preach to the people who were there from other countries to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. The people heard them speaking the wonderful works of God in their own languages. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamians, Judeans, Cappadocians, Pontusians, Asians, Phrygians, Pamphylians, Egyptians, Libyans, Cyrenians, Romans, Jews, proselytes, Cretans, and Arabians. Acts 2.41 then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they were happy as they learned about Jesus and shared together. One day Peter and John were on their way to the temple, and they told a lame man to rise up and walk in Jesus' name and he was healed, Acts 3. The religious leaders were upset that Peter and John were teaching that Jesus was the Messiah, and they had Peter 
and John held until they could hear their story. The next day, Peter and John were brought before the religious leaders and told not to preach about Jesus, who had healed the 40-year-old lame man. But Peter and John told them they had to follow God. The religious leaders let Peter and John go, and when they met with the other Christians, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost again. Acts 4.31 the people helped one another. Acts 4.36 And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levi, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Apparently inspired by Barnabas, Ananias and Sapphira sold a piece of land and brought some of the price of the land to the church, but claimed they were giving all. When Peter confronted Ananias about his lie, Ananias fell down dead. Ananias' wife came in later verified the same story that Ananias had told and dropped dead too. And people were healed of sickness and unclean spirits. The leaders of the established religion in Jerusalem did not appreciate the message and the miracles of the ecclesia, a.k.a. the called out, a.k.a. the church, and they put the apostles in prison. But an angel of the Lord released the apostles that night and told them to go speak all the words of this life in the temple. The religious leaders discovered the apostles were missing. Then someone came in and told them, The men you put in prison are in the temple teaching. They sent the captain and the officers to get the apostles and told them not to to teach in Jesus' name. But the apostles took the meeting as an opportunity to teach them that Jesus is the Messiah. The religious leaders discussed what to do, ended up beating the apostles and released them. But the apostles left with the attitude that they were blessed because they had been beaten for Jesus. After that, they taught openly in the temple and in houses until the religious leaders stoned Stephen, who was one of the seven deacons, to death. Acts 6 and 7. Saul, a.k.a. Paul, was one of the religious leaders who was part of the stoning of Stephen. But Jesus introduced himself and blinded Saul slash Paul, as he was traveling to Damascus to persecute Jesus' followers. Jesus sent Saul, Paul, to Damascus, and he was blind for three days. But Jesus sent a follower named Ananias to pray for Saul, Paul, and he received his sight. Ananias put his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And it was as if the scales fell off his eyes and he could see. Acts 9, verses 17 and 18. And Paul preached Jesus is the one. The Jews in Damascus did not like Saul, Paul's, preaching about Jesus, and they wanted to kill him. But they lowered Paul down the wall of the city, and Paul escaped in a basket. The Holy Spirit sent Philip to tell the Ethiopian eunuch about Jesus too. The Ethiopian man believed Philip that Jesus is the Messiah, 
and he was baptized in Jesus' name. While all these things were happening with Paul and Philip, Peter healed Aeneas in a town called Lydda, and people were saved when they saw what God had done. Then Peter prayed over Darkus' dead body, told her to arise, and she opened her eyes, sat up, and came back to life. Acts 9.40 Then God sent an angel to a man named Cornelius, who was a Roman centurion, and told him to call for Peter. While God was instructing Cornelius, the Roman soldier, God was putting Peter in a trance, showing him a sheet filled with animals that Jews were not allowed to eat, and telling him to eat them. God showed Peter that God decides what is clean and unclean, and he was using this vision to show Peter that God loves the whole world and Jesus had died so that anyone who believed in him, even Gentiles, were being brought into the kingdom of God. 